Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wendy K. Laidlaw here from Hugh Endometriosis Naturally. As always, I hope that this podcast and this video finds you well. Today, I'm going to be talking about a big band of bullies and when you might feel like giving up. And of course, you must never, ever give up. But we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But today, it's, um, yeah, today's been a really tough day, which is why I thought I would come on here and uh, share with, with you all. I don't normally talk about those tough days very much because I try to be one of those people that are firmly focused on the positive, focus on what I'm grateful for, what you know I feel so lucky to have in my life. I make an effort every day to try and look at life from the glass half full or the full full perspective and not the glass half empty. Some days are harder than others, but I work hard at this. We live in a Western world nowadays that has running water, gas, electricity and amenities that other impoverished parts of the world would kill for, and some do, sadly. However, whilst we have these material items in abundance, we live in the West. And what, we, what we don't have in the West is emotional richness, where you just have to look at some of the beaming smiles of poor children in India, Africa and Cambodia to be struck that something is missing in the West. Marketing companies for several decades have tried to appeal to our egos and paint the false, never-ending idealisms and images to convince us that if we just fill that empty void with metal, plastic or digital, we will be happy. By purchasing or living a lifestyle, we will look successful and have it all and be happy. Whatever all is, of course. Facebook or fake book, as some would call it, feeds into that perception of falseness that we are surrounded by day in, day out. What I've learned on my journey is that we seek to be felt, heard, seen, loved, valued, appreciated, recognized, and that lies within us all, bizarrely, but more on that later. So we have to remain aware. We have to keep focused and observe our thoughts and our feelings like a custodial guard protector and a seer of all. We have to keep our mind and heart open to safe people only, of course, and with that strong protector part firmly in place. But I'm finding today a challenge. I got back from a business meeting to discover I had several hundred emails in my inbox. I don't share this to brag, but to explain a true reality um, of many women these days who are continually bombarded with messages and emails. There is the usual salesy drivel and dross, but the emails that fire me up the most are the two other types. Some of these emails are from women who had read my paperback book and are starting their wonderful journey and are sharing their news of their progress and reduction in pain. That brings me so much joy. And my favourites, the ones that fill my heart with even more joy, are like the two other important emails that I got from former students who have recently graduated and are sharing their joy of putting the endometriosis and adenomyosis conditions into remission and the excitement that they now feel about the future for the first time in their lives. Then there were some from one of my current students who has recently just um, started on her new journey. I remember and realize it takes courage and it's a frightening thing to take that leap of faith on a new pathway of healing naturally. It may feel like the great unknown. As, and as one woman put it, I feel like I'm going rogue from the medical machine. And at the early stages, and in particular in week six of the foundation program, I call this the wobble week because there's such a rise of emotions that start to, to, to bubble up. Wobble week or week six is named because we're starting to make changes. Changes are starting to happen. And change is frightening. 
We all seek change and fear change in equal measure. That's the irony. But when consciously and subconsciously it starts to happen, anxiety may start to arise, mainly because it's unfamiliar. What I've realized as I support women emotionally through this journey, every time some positive elements start to appear, those people around them, be it family or so-called friends or work colleagues or doctors or medical professionals, try to call it into question what they are doing. And that's what I find challenging. How can people be so unkind, unsupportive and cruel to women with endometriosis and or adenomyosis whom they have seen suffer needlessly for decades? Women who are strong, amazing, driven, dynamic women who have stood up, stood out and stood forward to take back power and control of their lives. And yes, I'm talking to you if you're one of those women. Not victims of the condition, oh no. The women I get the honor of working with are incredible. I tell them that often on this journey. And I tell them that because it's true and said to counter the negativity of the numerous toxic people that invariably are around her. I'm in a privileged position to help women with endometriosis and adenomyosis and I never forget it. Just like I never forget my own torrid journey. The one that really was done alone and carved out the way for what works for women around the world now. But as I mentioned, today is a tough day. Reading the emails of women triggered into anxiety and fear by those around them that should be actually building them up and not tearing them down. Those that are filled with such bitterness and closed mindedness that the highly sensitive woman with endometriosis is left spiraling and confused as to why they would be treated like that. Toxic people are in abundance in our world, as I've mentioned before and in previous podcasts. They largely go unchecked and masquerade wrapped in their own ego. I was part of a business course recently that optimized this type of person in action. Our group facilitator was a woman who was fully self-absorbed, to be polite. She spoke to the group like they were children, abused her power, was dictatorial by nature and cared not for the business people had or for the vast investment the group members had made to develop their businesses to help and reach and impact more people. Her grandiose attitude was coupled with the poor me mentality, a classic sign of the narcissistic personality disorder. She even reduced a beautiful heart-centered woman to tears in front of the class. She cared not when another woman fell and cracked the back of her head on a solid cement pathway she shared, bizarrely, how her daughter um, irritated her. Well, her daughters irritated her and how one of them was a prostitute living in a brothel and a drug addict. And then she went on to say how she had a victim mentality. I can remember like it was yesterday the shock I felt go through my body when she shared this to the class. It was shared under the guise of poor her. Poor her that her daughter was a prostitute. The shock even now, as I think back to being aware of my mouth hanging open in disbelief that one human, who happened to be her mother, could be so self-absorbed and detached and uncaring about her own child. Yet as I say this, this was also like my mother. She was detached and self-centered and solely self-focused. I was used as a tool by her to get her needs met from as, as long as I could remember. She would even go on to commit the ultimate betrayal a mother could do to her developing daughter. Swapping bottles for kisses on my 17th birthday with my boyfriend. And then she would go on to have an eight month affair and share the intimate details. What type of human does that to another? I can tell you that type of human is a toxic and poisonous one. It took me years of unraveling to make sense of her, but also of myself. You know when you've been around a toxic person when you hang up the phone or leave the company of them and feel yuck flat and down. To start to be aware of how people make you feel is very important part of this journey, especially as a woman with endometriosis and or adenomyosis. You see the high degree of sensitivity is acute. It has been since birth. And you know what I mean. How from someone saying hello, you can sense their mood. From walking into a room, you sense those who are sad or couples who have argued, etc. That high degree of sensitivity is a huge strength, however, but I suspect you feel it's a curse at times. But please don't. 
your sensitivity is incredible. But the overwhelm you felt is maybe because you've sensed the cruel intentions or confusing behavior of those around you that as the marketing people continually portray that are supposed to be super cute and caring. Yet they don't care. Like some of my clients shock as they realize their nearest and dearest aren't as dear as they thought. How the emergence of awareness of the reality of confusing behavior causes stress and anxiety and creation of assertion of boundaries for protection is the next stage. Back in my course, I felt this protective need and genes rise up in me for my new course members in my group. How I felt protective of them, even though I knew that they were grown adults and could take care of themselves. Yet they were not aware of the toxic facilitator's effect on their confidence and self-esteem. How she slowly and corrosively tried to undermine each person as much as she could or get away with. However, her power struggle did not end well. After various shaming attempts by her and her sidekick, and for the sake of protecting the group, I felt it was time to challenge the pro quo. By establishing clear, acceptable and non-acceptable boundaries, appropriate protection was able to be had with this particular woman. But it's taken me a few years to get there and have the confidence to recognize who I am and who they are. And I guess that's why when I read emails about bullies chastising my amazing, beautiful clients, it's really tough to read. However, I have abject faith in my protocols to help guide and empower women, not only to put the conditions into remission, but deserve levels of protection and boundaries for emotional, mental and physical health. Even from so-called loved ones who may be more toxic than anyone knows and probably should carry a government health warnings around their neck. Women without knowing are looking for elusive happiness in all their own places. Marketing companies work tirelessly to promote our happiness is when we buy that car, house or piece of fabric over with an overpriced label. But it's not external where we should find peace, happiness or joy. It's internal. It may be, however, that the sense of self one seeks to get clarity on is masked by crippling poor self-beliefs bestowed upon you by toxic people. When you learn to value yourself and the, and the, the right that you have to have your own boundaries as a protection, even from the closest ones or family or authority figures, that's when real joy and peace emerge. But awareness is the first step. Identifying the band of bullies in your life is the next step. And, and the next is to put ink to paper and keep noticing how these people make you feel. Remember that you did not choose endometriosis or adenomyosis. It has shown up in your body for a reason. Never at any point when you were a little girl did you dream, when I grew up, I wish to be racked in pain, distress, anxiety, and to feel dreadful or worry about getting to work, maintaining my career, or how to get through a day of menstruation without fearfully seeking out where the toilets are, or worse, end up bedridden and be isolated and alone. That is no girl's dream, and it wasn't yours. So never ever let anyone irrelevant of their position or authority, or oh, however many letters in front or after their name, tell you otherwise. Never ever let anyone talk down to you for any reason ever. You don't have to be aggressive, you just have to learn how to be assertive and put appropriate boundaries in place. And that takes time to learn and the right balance of course, but the more you increase your awareness, stay awake to the toxicity out there and notice the stronger you will feel emotionally. Your body has an innate ability to heal itself and if it feels constantly under attack verbally, psychologically or emotionally, then that will hamper that natural healing process. Do not underestimate that. If you notice that you are made to cry every day or sometimes two to three times every day or several times a week, write about it, journal to get clarity and start to pay attention as to who and what is causing those tears. For pain, crying and suffering is not who you are. You deserve more than that. I know you seek love. I know you seek to be seen and heard and valued. That is part of being a normal human healthy being. You do not seek to be put down, criticized, mocked, teased to tears 
or silence with silence. And while you did not choose your current situation, you must remember this is not your final destination. I believe endometriosis has shown up in your body for a reason, as I've mentioned. I believe it's one of the five Ps or maybe all of the five Ps, i.e. five poisons, that are causing this condition to remain. Endometriosis is a complex condition. If it was an easy one, there would, be, there would not be the multiple surgeries and drugs prescribed over decades by doctors or 175 million women suffering. But the paradigm is this condition is not complex. Your body is simple when it comes to healing. If you can identify the root causes of inflammation and hormonal imbalance, then you can start on a new path to empowerment and remission for good. But of course, you don't know what you don't know. So make sure that you get in the know. Make it your life's mission to learn about the alternatives to painkillers, drugs and surgery. And do not give up any of your organs or body parts without a fight or full investigation. Your body needs you to pay attention. Ask questions and challenge any flyaway remarks that you're being difficult or challenging or it's all in your head. And question and challenge those remarks or statements and, what, and seek more answers. You are unique. You are a beautiful woman who has been temporarily blighted by this condition. But don't let it define you. You define it. You investigate this from a different perspective. Think outside the box. Do something differently if you're not getting better. Reach out for safe, supportive guidance and direction and never become a victim of endometriosis, but become victorious and a boss instead. Learn how to put endometriosis and adenomyosis into remission and become an endoboss. I feel it's apt to finish by reading out the popular poem by Marianne Williamson called Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. What a beautiful poem, and you may have heard it before. And I believe it is your light that frightens the toxic people around you, for it shines out the darkness in them, the hole where a heart should be. And you know the ones I'm talking about. Now, if you'd like a free download of that wonderful poem that has been specially created for this podcast, then please email support at healendometriosisnaturally.com. But make sure that you believe in you, believe in your light, even if you feel a bit in darkness right now. Trust your instincts and your intuition above all and everything else. You have so much more power than anyone ever permitted you to believe. And you know what? I can help you if you feel stuck. Remember that reaching out for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. Now, next week, I will be sharing how Mojka from Slovenia, a successful yoga teacher, went from being told by surgeons she may need a full hysterectomy to putting her endometriosis condition in remission within seven months. It's always such a joy to share these stories, so make sure that you subscribe to listen to next week. So when you feel like giving up, reach out instead and consider taking that first baby step to becoming an endoboss and even try the 21 day challenge to putting yourself first for 21 days. Will you accept the challenge to stand up and claim your right to a pain-free body in life? I hope so. And I so look forward to meeting you. But until then, to your health.
Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.